Scott's local marketing update is brought to you by Scott Gallagher. Scott is the co-founder of Local Marketing Source and has become the recognized expert in providing online marketing services to local businesses. Follow Scott on Twitter at Scott Gallagher 5 and on Facebook.com slash Scott P. Gallagher. Hey, well, good afternoon, everyone. Scott Gallagher here with Local Marketing Source, bringing your weekly local marketing industry update. Now, next week's LMS member call is going to be Wednesday, April 30th at 4 p.m. Eastern. And don't forget to listen and subscribe to our podcast as well as our YouTube channel. Now, um, I got, I got. As you can see, I'm wearing some Blackhawks uh, attire today. While we're into, we're well into the playoffs, and uh, tonight's somewhat of an important game. So here I am in Chicago supporting my team, and got my Blackhawks hat on. And uh, you don't want to see my hair right now. This is a little bit messy, but nonetheless, I've got a really good call for you this week. And I know some of you are just listening and on the line, so you really can't see me. Uh, but we just had a good little laugh about two minutes ago because, well, anybody that's on the webinar right now, I'll go ahead and show you. You can, because if you're live on the webinar, then you you really can't see me until I turn on my webcam. But there's there's my webcam. You can see me now. Uh, you can see I'm in front of a green screen and whatnot, but I'm going to have a little bit of a laugh because I'm wearing a green shirt underneath um, underneath my Blackhawks jersey, and I'm sitting in front of a green screen, so I don't know how, how well that's going to come through. But nonetheless, we've got a good week this week. Now, there's um, four different things that we're going to be talking about, and uh, it's interesting. This is a little bit of a change-up week. <clears throat> Got quite a few notes in front of me, but only four different things. But first off, and if you were attending today's webinar for LMS members on reviews, this is a really good extension because one of the things I'm discussing is do positive reviews actually motivate customers to buy? What's the data on that? And what is the actual data on consumer influence for negative reviews? Well, we're going to look at some of that. Daily Motion. If you're familiar with Daily Motion, they're a French-based organization. They're a competitor to YouTube. And Daily Motion has come out, I'm going to say it, whining because they're concerned that Google is favoring YouTube videos over Daily Motion. So let's break that apart and see what that's all about. Another thing, an extension to today's webinar, I've got an excellent study here on rich snippets and markups and how, um, what is it, one-third of Google results are showing websites that have rich snippets and markups. But the question is, how many websites on the whole utilize this type of HTML programming? And we're going to decipher quite a bit of interesting stuff here. Um, <laughs> I, I was kind of thinking about how I was going to say this next one and, and word it, but you, you know, basically how, how, you know, now that marijuana sales are firing up and they're firing up faster than you can light a blunt at a 420 party, um, what does that have to do with local internet marketing? Well, we're actually going to talk about that in a very professional sense as well. And then finally, some myths on Matt Cutts and SEO, and he's debunking a few more myths this week. So, uh, that seems to be our overview, and the tip for local business this week, we're going to talk about markups, HTML, rich snippets. So we'll get to that, why that's relevant for a local business. All right, guys, um, so do, do reviews. Customer reviews. I just did an hour and a half presentation on reviews, and I could have done another two hours on it. Uh, there's a lot to talk about reviews. And just as a, a review of reviews, uh, if you recall, or if you're just starting to listen to me and whatnot, customer reviews influence or have benefits of influencing a local business for three different things. What are they? Well, reviews influence rankings. Some people tend to argue this, but I could easily show you uh, excerpts directly from Google's pages that indicate Google has explicitly said 
And in nine years of doing this in this business, I've never seen Google explicitly say these are factors that influence our rankings directly. But they say that about reviews. Number two, reviews influence conversion both positively and negatively. As a matter of fact, one of the things we're going to be talking about this week is exactly how reviews influence conversion in different ways. And number three, reviews, they influence your service area. Well, uh, on, on the public discussion and uh, at this point in time, I'm going to come out and say that I have not read or seen any studies that allude to this. I've only got internal anecdotal proof um, that reviews influence service areas. But let's break this down a little bit and take a look at it. Remove the internet for a second, all right? Forget about the internet. How does a business define its service area? Well, if it's a plumber, it probably defines its service area by looking at a map and drawing a circle and says, I will come to you. But the truth is, is that plumber will definitely go outside of its service area for a job that is well worth it. Let's face it. So a service area for a plumber is defined on where they do their jobs. But what's a service area for a dentist firm? Well, pretty much the same thing, just in reverse, right? How far somebody is willing to travel to go to that particular dentist. So your service area can be defined by where your customers reside. That's simple. We know that. That's probably the most logical and the one way that's going to give us the most accurate description of a business's service area. Because it's real. It's reality. It is what it is. Well, we could digitize this in different ways. But let's consider something here. Is service area an important aspect to a search engine? Well, let's take the dentist scenario again. And we'll take a dentist in Manhattan and a dentist in Iowa. Geographical differences. Let's assume everything else is the same except their geography. Well, population density and dentist density is going to be different between Manhattan and Iowa. Obviously, there's going to be more dentists in a square mile in Manhattan. And obviously, there's going to be more people per square mile in Manhattan more competition, more people, you don't have to travel as far, they don't have as many vehicles, they use a lot of uh, subways and, and taxi services there. So a service area for a dentist in Manhattan is likely going to be much smaller than a service area for a dentist in Iowa. So geography is a factor as well in terms of a search engine interpreting a service area and determining, hey, what's the average? Is this client or this business higher than the average or lower than the average. Now let's take another scenario. Let's take um, two dentists. Again, both of them, let's, let's assume they're both in Algonquin, Illinois, where I have my office. And uh, let's assume everything among those dentists are the same, except their personality. One is happy-go-lucky, always in a positive mood, always exuberates positivity. The other dentist can perform the exact same services and get the exact same results, but is just a crab butt. All right, which of those two businesses are going to do better in the long run? Well, I could easily argue that the dentist that is happy and exuberates positivity is going to do better if everything else is, remains the same. So if that's true, and that's the case, that dentist that's happier is going to have a better business, more profitable business, a higher returning clientele, maybe a higher spending clientele, a uh, clientele that's going to offer more referrals. In other words, it's just going to be a better business. So a business that's better, and if a patient was dealing with dentist B, the grump, the grump, that's not even a word, <laughs> grumpy, right? <laughs> the one that was grumpy. Um, chances are patients are willing to drive by or past a grumpy dentist in order to have a fruitful experience. In other words, their service area is going to be bigger. Their service area is bigger because they offer a better experience. So service area could 
not only be defined by the business, it could also be defined by geography, and it could be defined by the quality of the business. In other words, service area for dentist A and dentist B cannot be the same. It's not natural, it's not organic, it's, it's against organic. If Google were to assume that all dentists in Iowa have the same service area. Now, when we go back to the definition of service area, and that's where your customers reside, can Google get this information easily? Well, the short answer is obviously yes. But most of us have no idea of how much information Google actually knows about us. They know when I do a search, they know who I am and where I live. So if I happen to go leave a review for a business and they know where I live, do you think that they could start to algorithmically start to plot out that business's real service area based off of real customers, where those real customers live? Of course they can. I can't find a single argument why that would not be incorporated into their algorithm. Five years of trying to contemplate this since I introduced that topic. And still to this day, our industry is not teaching it as a relevant factor. But I am committed and convinced that the three things that reviews influence are ranking, conversion, and your service area. Apologize. All right. And the reason why I am sharing this information uh, with you is because there's a large degree. It did uncover the fact that there's a large degree of skepticism among consumers on the internet. What does that mean? It means that we've got some educated buyers in the United States. Well, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> That's a whole another path. We won't go down that one. But there's some educated buyers because they're remaining skeptical. They've, they've got skepticism in regards to reviews. Well, maybe we don't believe everything on the internet. Maybe we know that the internet, and we've been trained that the internet is anonymous, when really it's not anonymous at all. Um, maybe we may be fearful as, well, maybe they planted those reviews themselves or they had their friends leave reviews. So, yeah, I can see the skepticism in there. Now, on a side note, and this is a tip for local business owners, video, video, video. I went through different aspects of testimonials that are relevant for local business, or for agency owners. And I discussed um, in great depth, why video is that much more influential. And if you can create organic videos that discuss reviews from real buyers, I think this whole study is, is just irrelevant to a discussion like that. All right, so daily motion. Daily motion, c'est français, oui? <laughs> it's a French organization. Um, yeah, f French was my second language. I, I took French immersion for 13 years of my life and, you know, when you don't practice something, you're no longer fluent in it. Mais je comprends français un petit peu, which means I understand it a little bit. And je, veux, je peux parler français un petit peu. I can speak French a little bit, but I still keep my French nice and sharp for, for the women. They like that. My son's chuckling in the background. Um, so Daily Motion has come out and said that Google is cheating, and I like this. I like this. I, I find some amusement into this discussion. That's why I'm sharing it with you. They're saying that Google serves up its own video content over Daily Motion videos. They've come out and they said. Uh, when internet users search Google for daily motion videos, they mysteriously don't appear. Yet YouTube hosted alternatives appear among results. Huh. First off, 
Uh, I've seen this argument against Google so many times. I think it is one of the most bogus, egotistical arguments that would ever exist. Google is Google, okay? They can do what they want. Their job is to give what they think are the most relevant results. It's that simple. They're not obligated to show anybody's content, period. They don't have to show anybody's content. Google, I, I do believe that Google is not evil for the most part. And I do believe that Google's algorithm is entirely org organic. If a company was able to prove that Google favored one piece of content over another piece of content that just had nothing to do with relevancy and providing a good experience, but had a biased approach, that is the core of the fastest growing, most desirable place to work in the world. They're the fastest growing company in the history of the world. This, that is something that could shut them down. Well, no, not shut them down. But their organic search, their free organic search is why they exist. Matt Cutts has just did a video last week about SEO myths. One of the myths was, what if I buy AdWords, I'm going to get higher rankings. Ironically, there's myths in the internet marketing place that say if you don't buy AdWords, you're going to get higher rankings. Well, like Matt says, maybe these two groups should get together and fight it, fight it out and you know, let our world live with just one myth, not, not both of these myths. But they're both myths. And buying AdWords says it's not, you, you know, your rankings are not going to be influenced. They've said this over and over and over, but people still don't believe Google. Well, I believe them, and I believe them because Google captured their market share because they were able to develop an algorithm that was infinitely better than anything else that existed that's out there. To this day, Google still provides better results. I continually try to test the three search engines to see how much they've been caught up. And I genuinely feel that, um, that Google provides much better, much better results. And that's why I just keep going back. I, I'm not biased towards Google or any of the other search engines. If Bing was a better tool for me, I would go to Bing. It's that simple. So would other people. So Google's core has to remain the best organic solution out there, period. If they lose that, they're going to lose market share. Why do you think Google Plus was invented two years ago? Their social network. Was it really to compete against Facebook? Everybody, I'm writing all this stuff two years ago. Google's going to compete against Facebook. Now they got 250 million users on Google Plus, and Facebook has 1.2 billion or 1.3 billion users, and Google Plus is catching up, and this and that, and blah, 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 blah. Come on, give me a break. Google's not in the social networking marketplace. They're not trying to compete against Facebook. They're not trying to replace Facebook as a social channel like Facebook did to MySpace. They're not. They have that in place to collect data, to collect social signals. And if you understand the Google algorithm and understand that it's, it's based off of links or exposure or citations, likability, whatever you want to call it, social channels are exactly that, but real. Real. Want to hear an interesting uh, statistic? There's more content created on the internet on April 23rd, 2014, in a 24 hour period, than the amount of content that was created on the internet in its first 20 years of inception. Pretty wild, huh? More information put on the internet today, and I'm sorry, I said 20 years, I meant 10 years. More information is created on the internet today in one day 
than its first 10 years. And I was on the internet within its first two years. My university was on the internet within the first three years. So, you know, it, it got pretty big in the 90s. We're even including, remember the dot-com boom and doom of the year 2000? That was also a part of this 10-year cycle, but more was created today. And why? It's because it's user-generated content. It's the people on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter that are constantly putting updates. And what, 37, 38 hours of video is uploaded to YouTube every 60 seconds? I mean, this, the numbers are just staggering as you go on, but the fact of the matter is that's a ton of content. Content that gets shared. Content that gets liked. Why do you eat at a busy restaurant? I eat at a busy restaurant because I know that they've got good service and good food. Well, content that goes viral is usually funny or emotional or it has an impact. So... Those are the social signals that Google Plus wants to pick up on. And that's why Google Plus is a lost leader. So back to uh, daily motion here. I mean, now that I've talked a little bit about why, you know, Google's algorithm and, and you know, why I believe that their or algorithm is entirely organic, you know, as a matter of fact, I think I reported on a call two or three weeks ago that the head of spam search, which is Matt Cutts in their department, put manual penalties on different areas of Google. It hit big news back, you know, four or five years ago when uh, AdWords received some manual penalties. In other words, they, they penalized, one department of Google penalized another department of Google. One department of Google penalized the Department of Google. Um, give me one second, please. Thank you. My son is just playing around all the equipment, and he knows better to get behind all the different wires and whatnot. Um, the... Uh, Where, where was I going? I lost my train of thought here. Now well, we're talking about daily motion. Oh yeah, the department that penalized AdWords. I mean, that's their number one revenue source. And the reason why they penalized them is because they were in violation of the terms and conditions set forth by linking. AdWords even did some keyword stuffing back in the day. Go figure. But most recently, a couple of weeks ago, Google Plus was penalized for, get this, buying links so they're willing to hurt themselves in order to keep the authenticity of their core product now with that um, there's two sides to this daily motion that I really wanted to, to talk about and that first off daily motion believes that Google's algorithm is skewed in favor of Google if this ever got out, if one disgruntled employee left Google and said, I'm the whistleblower and I have the evidence, this is going to blow up on the internet as big as the Edward Snowden event did within our own community. It's going to be big for Google. Do you think Google wants to take that risk in exchange for some profit? Probably not. If they do, they've got some pretty stupid people running that company. It makes no sense to try and cheat and hide like that. It's going to come out. And if it comes out, it's going to ruin their, their business. But the other side of daily motion, I look at this and I say, you know what? Who gives a shit? It's their own platform. They have every right to do what they want. Even though I don't believe that they are, they have every right to do what they want on their Google search. If they want to show YouTube videos all day long because it's their own stuff and it's their platform, go 
for it. Let them do it. But Daily Motion is raising this stink. They're going to Europe, the European governments, and trying to get the governments involved and trying to sue Google. What? I'm a Canadian. To me, that's American mentality. That's like, I spill some coffee on my leg, let's sue McDonald's for a million bucks mentality. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And, and, and then they come out and they're, they say that um, <clears throat> Europe, get this, this is a quote from the CEO of Daily Motion. Europe should be aware that the United States is ruling the digital world and Europe should react. That the United States is ruling the digital world. It almost sounds like war conversation to me. Maybe I'm stretching myself. The U.S. rules the digital world. All right. I have my own opinions about the United States. I was born and bred in Canada, and Canadians are growing up and taught to have a love-hate relationship with Americans. I do think that Canadians are secretly jealous of a lot of what America has. But I'll tell you, after living here for nine, almost ten years, and growing up on north of the border, I'm sick and tired of the conversations because it's just half a dozen of one or six of the other. Oh, you got free health care in Canada. It's not free. Well, your taxes are higher in Canada because we pay for health care. Well, your beer is a lot more expensive. Yeah, because beer drinkers are more taxing on the system. But we don't pay for our children to get registered in school. We don't pay for our garbage pickups. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on of the services. At the end of the day, my disposable income is the same. And I like life the same. I do miss my friends. But I got good friends here, too. So... Th 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 those, those two are the same. And this mentality that this guy has is that Europe should be aware that the United States is ruling the digital world. Well, no, they're not. The United States just happens to have some Americans that have built some very successful, strong companies that do well on the Internet. It's not that America as a country is ruling the internet. It's that there are American Americans that have created companies that service the internet better. So, I'm sorry, Daily Motion. I'm not that happy. Uh, moving on here. Uh, boy, I'm taking this is a long call, isn't it, guys? Um, this one's a quick quick study here. 36%, over one-third of Google results show websites that have the HTML markup, schema markup. One-third of websites in results are utilizing markups. According to the same study, less than 3% of websites on the Internet use markups. One-third of results... 30, that's actually 36% of results utilize HTML markups, but only 3% of websites utilize it. Hmm. Do you think maybe your websites should have the HTML structured markup or rich snippets? Hmm. Maybe Google really likes those, huh? Hmm. Your websites should all have it. Period. This includes your art authorship markup, your publisher markup, your H card markup, which is for your address, uh, and H review markup, all as a minimum. All four of those should be on every website. Period. All the time. All right. Um, so yeah, what did I say earlier? Uh, you know, marijuana sales are, are going faster now than uh, lighting up a blunt at a 420 party, right? Um, what the heck does this have to do with local SEO? And why am I talking about this right now? Well, for, for those that are out of the United States, um, there's two states in this country that legalized marijuana 
this year, January 1st. And I believe that there's 21 states that have legalized medical marijuana. When I first moved here in 2005, I think there may have been two or three states. Would you, yeah, two or three states that had medical marijuana. Um, so even, you know, in nine years, it's, it's just, it's exploded. It's actually created an industry. And um, what's happening is there's a lot of gray lines when it comes to this because the state of Colorado, just like Canada when it comes to alcohol and, and tobacco, that they can't advertise. I mean, if you own a head shop or you're a dispensary, whether it's a medical dispensary or a recreational dispensary, uh, you can't advertise yourself at all. There's no way. But the question becomes, can you organically advertise yourself? We know that 50% of consumers utilize the search engines to find local businesses. So we have to assume that this big industry that's starting to blow up, lots of money at stake here. Um, I mean, tax revenues in, in Colorado are going to exceed $100 million this year. That means that there could be a billion dollars in tax revenue for, for California if they legalized it. There's a lot of money here. So there's a lot of businesses that are making money too. We have to make that assumption if the industry is, is really that big. There's over 300 dispensaries that opened up, recreational dispensaries that opened up in Colorado as of January 1st of this year. It's, the numbers are staggering, but the point is, is, how do they get their word out? How do they get their message out? How do people know that they're there? Well, you've got old school word of mouth, but half of your customers are finding you on the internet. Hmm. Organic SEO, huh? Well, so I started to do some w looking into this and get, trying to get an understanding for this. And there's a couple of things that we've got to understand is the gray areas of, of the laws, um, such as I live in the state of Illinois. As of January 1st of this year, medical marijuana is legal in the state of Illinois. It's only for a variety of different ailments. But can a... Can a dispensary buy AdWords? What are Google's opinions on that? You can't buy AdWords on tobacco or alcohol, but what about medical marijuana? That actually helps people. What about recreational marijuana now? Is it in the same class as alcohol and tobacco? Probably. But it's not in the same class as medical marijuana. And I know there's a lot of people that claim that they smoke medical marijuana and really don't need it. You know, they've, they've come up with some strange ailment and, and uh, they just want to smoke it recreationally. But there are genuinely people that, for a whole variety of different reasons, that, that really, really need it and could use it medically. And I can name off dozens of people that I know, um, such as my, my past mom, who passed away of cancer 14 months ago out of Ontario. They gave her an ounce of marijuana, uh, well, what was it, an ounce a week or something, really, really ridiculous. And um, she's not a pot smoker. And for the last six months of her life, she got high <laughs> and uh, it worked. Sorry, probably shouldn't have brought that topic up. Maybe I'll make myself laugh because I got high with her and we laughed. It was fun. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot that's really starting to shake out into the internet community when it, when it comes to marijuana. You've got 21 states. Uh, that have it medically, and are they going to sell ads, or aren't they going to sell ads, and what is the search engines like Google going to do when it comes and incorporates the local search? Well, it seems like that they are allowing 
allowing this to happen. There's some searches that I triggered or that, that I, I did that triggered the local results. Um, I have one up here that I did a search for. I'm just going to go to it right now. Why is my computer super slow right now? And anybody that's on the line, I'm going to go ahead and just share my share my desktop. And you can just see that this is a search for marijuana, Denver, Colorado. And you've got all of these local businesses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So those are the top seven businesses in Denver. And we look at the map. Did you see all the dots? I don't want to do that. Look at all these dots, guys. There's 300 in here. Why did these guys come out? So A, there's a lot of money involved. B, that there's a lot of them. C, that this seems to be a changing trend. See where I'm going? All right. I'm digressing because I'm not giving a lot of value here to uh, people that would not be in that business or not be in that industry. I don't know if you guys can see this puppy right here. This is our newest mascot. Oh, Vegas, yes, you've been on camera before. It's because Trinity wants to come on camera too. Hey, anybody that's on the line, I'll show you. There you go. You can see Trinity now. We have Trinity and Vegas that hang out in our office. You can find them on our website. They're the president and CEO of the firm. You know, Google, 20,000 employees allows animals into their business because of the studies that they've had. And I've been bringing my dog for a long time to my company, and I think every company. Every business should have animals there. Mind you, I'm an animal lover, so. But yeah, lots of notes in this. I could talk about this this marijuana situation quite a bit, but uh, it's just I find it so interesting that it's hitting my industry and mainstream. And for anybody that's on the line right now, uh, that's an agency owner. There are no agencies that cater specifically to that industry yet. And lastly, before I finish up and get to calls here, um, uh, I already talked about this. Matt Cutts came out and he said, you know, he debunked some SEO myths. And uh, there's a video that just came out, you know, one of them was... Uh, paid ads that correlate to organic results, and I already went through some of the thoughts on that. So um, that's about it for today, guys. So if there are any questions, um, I will open the floor, but I will be back in about 30 seconds. Well, thanks for watching the local marketing industry update. We've got these things coming out every single week. So if you liked with what you heard, just click the button right above me right here to subscribe to our channel. If you'd like to get a little bit more, right over here, go check out localmarketingsource.com. We've got free reports that you can grab. You can even register for our free marketing course to get in and see the portal. Or just go ahead and follow us on some of the social channels. We'll be around. Until next time.